Yes, yes, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another exciting episode of Sitting Down with Stand Ups. I am your co host, Justin Sakarica. As always, we have the man, White Daryl, aka the bean behind the scene, Daryl Bean, doing all the technical stuff that we have no idea how it works. Right. And of course, over to my left, I have the very alive yes. and the very lovely yes. Elena Gonzalez. I'm so glad you uh, survived that little it, scare. It was a close call. It really, really was. I wasn't sure what my life was going to be like. It all flashed before my eyes. Uh, but Carrie uh, and I were talking and uh, boiled it down to just, it's just too much in one bite. Yes. That's the only problem. It wasn't, it didn't taste bad, but the 1.5 million Scoville units times two... <laughs> You don't. You don't need that. Yeah, that's um, that's basically a weapon. Yes. Because I believe that pepper spray is near or below that. I honestly, I, I think so. I would believe it. Yeah. But, um, but she actually mentioned something very delicious. Uh, crushing it up and putting it on like vanilla ice cream. Ooh, that would sound really, really good because um. And we were having this yes. conversation uh, in your kitchen. And I noticed that you have an ice cream maker. I do have an ice cream maker, yes. Mm -hmm. I haven't fired it up in a while, but I need to. Um, my mother got it for me many, many moons ago for Christmas, and I have used it, and it's great. Mm -hmm. It is so great to just, like, make ice cream, and then you're sitting there watching it spin. <laughs> and at first, you're like, ah, just, you know, I don't think it's working. And then you go back 20 minutes later, and you're like, oh, my God, I'm making ice cream, like... And yeah, you just have just, you gone oh. with like funky flavors? I have, yeah. 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 So the first flavor I made was it was an orange liquor ice cream. Oh, delicious. Nice. The second one was a big hit with me, not anybody else. <laughs> Black licorice ice cream. Okay. Uh, I thought it was very good. It I didn't put enough food coloring in there and it turned out green so it looked <laughs> it looked weird like like pond scum you're thinking like shamrock shake and then yes. instead you get okay but it was very good um did you go like black licorice flavoring or did you go like sambuca because i know that you're like a liquor guy like, um i did like the black licorice flavor like okay. you have to melt licorice down which takes about six years to, <laughs> to freaking melt the damn stuff down and then just like but it was worth it do they have a special kitchen appliance specific do they have a licorice Melter kitchen appliance. Um, my my suggestion to that is get a new pan. <laughs> Just get a new pan. Yeah, uh -huh. there's no way to do it because you're you're not ever gonna get that off the pan. Fair. fair. Yeah, for for ice cream, the only I uh -huh. enjoyed because everybody else was like, "Yeah, this is disgusting." I'm like, "Well, I told you it's black licorice ice cream." Right. You ask for a bowl, and then you're gonna sit there and tell me it's nasty. Maybe try try some first. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I I've had some bad ice cream before, but none that I've made. Oh, I also made Mexican hot chocolate. Ooh, that was probably really yes. good. Yeah, because you put some cayenne pepper in there. and Now, can you put, um, talking about crushed up peanuts, could you put uh, crunch or, like, chunk elements yes. in there? Yes, and that goes in in the last step. So the first step, oh, you okay. the first step is you make, like, the liquid base, and then you let it sit, like, overnight, um, not in the freezer, in the fridge, so everything blends together. Then when you put it in and it slowly spins and mixes, that's when you put in your chocolate chips, gotcha, your nuts, gotcha, 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 gotcha. or your yeah, your your uh, gizzards. Yeah, your gizzards. <laughs> your gizzards. Yeah, we were joking um, that that slowly but surely this show is turning into to cooking with stand. -ups. It is yes, and it's. I think it's great. It is yeah. great. I mean, you you've got all the the stuff. You've got a smoker in the mm. backyard and best investment I ever made. Fifty bucks. A, what? A guy at one of my old jobs was getting rid of it. And he's like, dude, 50 bucks. I'm like, hell yeah. And then a few weeks after he tried some of the food I made, he's like, uh, can I buy it back? I'm like, no, nope. Sorry, pal. So was he just not doing it right? He wasn't doing it right. He didn't, he didn't do any research. He had no idea what he was doing. He would just throw shit in there and like expect it to be good. It's like, no, you got to season the meat properly. You got to put the right amount of wood chips in. You got to have the vents open a certain way. It's a science. Technically, I'm a scientist. <laughs> I'm a meat scientist, so yes. Is that on your dating profile? Oh, uh, it was. <laughs> it was. And then you get people who, uh, yeah, and you have to <laughs> break up with your subscribers. And <laughs> oh god, god, what if, what if she's not the one that unsubscribed? 
Oh, I'm going to hear no. about this. Oh, I'll, no. I will probably hear about this. Um, anywho, <laughs> um, because I'm probably going to get fried for that. Air fryers. Let's yes. Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it just, it it's become, uh, it's really just tapping into everything you love. You yes. know, comedy and cooking and all of that. And recording these episodes uh, a little behind the scenes, like, really has become this, like, familial, communal, let's get together, let's eat some food. and It's a great hang. It is. It, you know, and like a lot of people who do comedy, they always say their favorite part is either the before or their after hang. Mm -hmm. The after hang, oh, yeah, which is great. Yeah, and that's how I know um, that, that I've gotten older because I used to show up to a party, you know, with a with a six pack or a case or, or something, mm -hmm. and now I'm showing up to parties with an air fryer. Yeah, like which that's, is, that's, uh -huh. you know... I mean, that is some, like, high-level shit right there. <laughs> it's great, you know? Uh -huh. I mean, if I had room to, like, take a smoker over someone's house, I would. <laughs> I would. Now, actually, when we... My friends and I got a lodge this past... Um, it was, like, late summer of last year. And I'm like, dude, I'll bring my smoker. I made it's pulled pork. It was great. It just, you know, kind of, like, mm -hmm. lift it up and get it in there. But, but yeah, now, like, as we get older, our yeah. party gifts have changed a little bit. But yeah. But yeah, it is cool to have like that little, you know, the community of, yes. you know. Yeah. And and when we were talking, uh, I think it was, was it the last episode or was it the episode before when we were talking about, you know, pillars of the community and uh, and and we mentioned um, one of the the new production companies. We said, oh, we should get someone from uh, Sam Rose yes. on. Yes. Yes, uh, and I think they they might be here. It's really? very possible that we could have somebody um, from Sam Rose on here. Uh, hopefully, we didn't royally screw up. I think we did that. because I oh I like oh, oh you see, see that I was gonna say I, yeah, I no, did no, no, screw no, it up because I didn't let you do your pun. No, 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 it was great it, though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, we do have one of the uh, the co-producers of Sam Rose Entertainment on. Some of you may know her as the Duchess. Yes. But we simply know her as a very, very funny lady and a good friend. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our guest, Ann Duke. And come on in here. Wearing the very cool... Hello, hello. Uh, I love that she, she color-coordinated. She did. With her period. Yeah. Yes, it's a very fancy outfit. I'm jealous, well, by the you way. Know, I am. I am that fancy lady. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hi. How you doing? You. Good to see you. How are you? Good. Hello, darling. Hello, hello. Good to see you. I'm so excited to sit down with stand-ups. Is that yes. how we're doing this? Yes, awesome. that's how we are doing it. I got it. all yes. my beverages. Mm -hmm. Is uh, this the eject button? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Just need, in case. We need to get you one more. Uh, we have a red one down there. Looking, looking at this reminds me. My other uh, favorite appliance is a soda stream. Um, and talking about traveling places with that, um, I I went on a trip uh, a couple weekends ago with with former guest Kate Brindle. Yes, and I brought <laughs> the uh, the Soda Stream, and uh, and it it was great in the room because then I'm not buying soda right. water. Mm -hmm. I've got it. Uh, except when you have two moms in the hotel room who then both do the look through after, it looks exactly like the coffee maker. Oh. And then you leave, and you get home, and you realize you left <laughs> your soda stream. Oh. In but the took the room. coffee maker. <laughs> that's what, that's oh, what I was hoping. Oh, was, that yeah. would have been great. I was no. hoping that you took no, home. That's a better joke. That's though. funny. That's yeah. Yeah. So this was your trip to uh, Black Con. Is yes. that right? Yes, yes. I was a little jealous. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, it was the first uh, comic, uh, Comic Con, uh, style thing. All new kids on the block. Yeah. yeah. It yeah, was, oh, I so would probably not go there, as yeah. you know. And but I'm a little old for that. Next time, <laughs> next time Kate comes on, we will. Uh, oh yes, you'll get a <laughs> three-hour synopsis. I, yeah, um, it'll be sitting down with sitting or sitting down with new kids on the block yes, at that point. Basically. Yes, basically. Mm -hmm. Yes, which How I would love you? it. I'm good. I'm good. I'm so excited to be here. I love all the talk about food because I am a foodie too. Mm, yes. And small appliances are something that I have many opinions about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Because I am kind of like a very, I have a very organized kitchen, a place mm -hmm. for everything, everything mm -hmm. in its place. You know, counter space is real estate in yes. my mind. Oh, yes. And so I do not have an air fryer, which okay. I am very, 
envious. Okay. Uh, so that's on my list. But I do have a very fancy cappuccino espresso maker. Ooh, yes. And that there is kind good. of a funny story behind it. Yes, please. Because uh, years ago, I had a boyfriend from England. Dave. You've probably heard Dave. of him. Dave. I Dave. talk about him a little bit in my <laughs> set. Um, and uh, Dave was one of those guys that had to have the most expensive, biggest of anything, mm -hmm. right? And so we had talked about getting a machine. Mm -hmm. So one day he just went ahead and did it. Okay. And he bought this DeLonghi thing that was literally this big and this tall, looked like it could have been in a Starbucks. Oh, okay. Without consulting with me first. Mm, and so that, that was dive. a lot of real estate to be taking up on our mm -hmm. counters. So needless to say, when he left, so did the DeLonghi. <laughs> And then I bought a nice Breville that uh -huh. is appropriately sized for my kitchen and does a much better job. So. Now, uh, point of <laughs> clarification, did did he leave with the appliance? Like, you gave him that to take, or <laughs> did you sell it, or did you just trash it? Oh, no, he he left it there, and then, came, you know, I mean, it took him months and months to finally oh. take okay. everything out. So clearly he didn't care that, that much about it in the first place if he didn't come get it right away. Well, it wasn't just the coffee machine he didn't <laughs> care that much about. Oh. No, I'm, I'm totally teasing. It was Fuck you, very, Dave. Very mutual, and we are very good friends to this day. So, you know. What's that like? wasn't meant to be. You know what? <laughs> I am one of those people that maintains relationships. You know, my mm -hmm. first husband, we divorced and stayed business partners for 12 years. And people think that I was, when he passed away, mm -hmm. that I was married to him, but I was not. But I still consider myself a widow. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have many men in my life that started out that way. And I just, I have this attitude that I can't, I, I don't want to look at a block of my life and have a regret or think yes. that was a waste mm -hmm. of time. Yep. So if you're somebody that's been in my life and there was a strong bond there, chances are pretty good you're going to stick around. Agreed. Gotcha. And, and, and both of my husbands ended up being fabulous friends, mm -hmm. which was now they're hanging out in heaven together or the other place. And that's the <laughs> yeah. I think one might be here and the other one's down there. But, uh, you know, we went on trips together. I mean, yeah. just, you know, never, life is never what you plan it to be. Yes. But you just kind of go with the flow, and that's sort of been my experience. That's a very mature way of... of well, thank of, you. Yeah, it's a very mature way. Don't let that get around about me. <laughs> yeah, 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 no worries. People that think I'm an immature bitch. Well, she was over there so. juggling earlier you know yeah. and, like dancing around so <laughs> juggling my many jobs yes. and roles and well yes because you are definitely a very very busy person um yes. i mean obviously we talked about you being one of the co-producers of sam rose entertainment which right right now that's like the hot thing in the comedy scene thank you i mean i see all these posts about it nothing but great great yeah. press about your shows i mean what where does the name Sam Rose come from? All right, well, that's a good story. So uh, many of you know that my partner is Mike Jeter, yes. a very well-known comic, mm -hmm. a longtime mentor to me. And then uh, we just, about a year and a half ago, decided to align forces. It sort of started with the Traverse City Comedy Festival. And now we're running seven or eight rooms across mm -hmm. the state, which is super exciting. Um, but Sam and Rose are the name of his parents. Oh. So that's, and he had been working under that business name for many years. Mm -hmm. But we like to pretend that, like, maybe it's kind of like this, like this Jewish agent in New York yeah. having this Sam Rose here, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I got I got an X for you. So we sort of, and our, our logo is kind of old timey looking uh -huh. like that too. Uh -huh. So, you know, Sam Rose might be somebody you'd see on Mrs. Basil. Yes. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I, we like it, and but everybody asks that. And I always say, well, I'm Sam and he's Rose, you know, or Rosie and Samantha, <laughs> yeah. whatever. But uh, Either way, it works. Yeah, it works. It works. You know what you could do is you could always get Nick Kelly to be Sam Rose. <laughs> Kind of have this whole yeah. like persona, like fedora. Yeah, yeah. like well, I uh, like Sam this, Rose here. I like this De Niro. I thought it was better mm -hmm. than his Pipitone. <laughs> I said Dude. all of a sudden, when did Paul Pipitone become Robert De Niro? That's but, yeah. that's gonna be the the Nick Kelly. That's the byline for his biography. Yeah. we're yeah, gonna okay. find out if Paul watches if we drop to twenty six subscribers again. Right <laughs> after the Nick episode, we're gonna find out if. Uh, but I think Paul's got a good sense of yeah, humor. Paul is not a bitter guy. He'll be good. Yeah, he'll be uh, good. So one of one of the things that I I absolutely love um, that you guys are doing in addition to uh, to the rooms is uh, you've really kind of um, what's the word I'm looking for uh, kind of honed uh, a bit of the embracing diversity in yes. the sense of of themed shows. Right. Can you talk a little yeah, bit about Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, a big part of what, you know, our part of our mission statement is to create amazing events while respecting the artists that we work with and mm -hmm. the venues that we mm -hmm. service. So, we have really 
embracing comics and respecting comics as professionals and paying them for mm -hmm. their time the way they should yes. be paid mm -hmm. is a big thing to us. And Absolutely. I think one of the true successes of the Traverse City Comedy Festival was that every single comic that came there got paid. Yes. And every single comic got a hotel room for yes. the entire mm -hmm. run. And we're just not used to that, right? Mm -hmm. Usually yeah. you go to a festival, you're buying your plane tickets, you're paying your hotel. Rarely do you get paid. It's right. a, and and as comics, you know, we uh, it's how it's hard for us to uh, value our self worth when we give our we give our yeah. time away yep. so freely. Yeah, well, well, it's almost like you're paying to do comedy sometimes right. when you drive, you know, an hour away and you're paying gas money and. You don't quite know what you're getting into, and I'm, I'm sure we've all been burned before right. where we thought we were going to get paid, Then it's right. like, oh, well, I talked to the owner. It's like, well, talk to him again because yeah. mm -hmm. I didn't drive two hours. So, to, so time yeah. is money. And, mm -hmm. and to the diversity question, I'm very proud at the Traverse City Comedy Festival, 50% of the comics on the roster were BIPOC. Mm -hmm. So that was huge to us. 50% were over 40 because mm. don't get me started about ages in this business. <laughs> yeah, and yes. and Nick's gone, yes. right? Okay. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Uh, but, you know, um, and that's, you know, I, I had another festival promoter ask me for some advice. You know, mm -hmm. any advice for us? I'm like, yeah, why don't you hire some comics over 40? Because believe it or not, they draw it. They have right. an audience, mm -hmm. and they're still funny. Mm -hmm. um, and then I wish I could say that 50% of the comics on the roster were women, but that just isn't the reality of our, of our world. 30% were, though, mm -hmm. and, and we're very much about promoting women. Mm -hmm. We don't have nearly enough female headliners. Yes. We can't book shows because there aren't enough. There are a lot of us that are on the cusp, mm -hmm. right, yep. and maybe we're headlining in smaller venues mm -hmm. or charity yep. shows, mm -hmm. but we're not headlining at the clubs yet, right? And one of my favorite stories that came out of the uh, festival, you'll know this story, mm -hmm. was that uh, Maria Bamford, mm -hmm. one of our headliners, who could not have been more lovely, oh. sat in on... I mean, the synergy with the head, national headliners was amazing. Yes. She's sitting in on workshops. Jackie Cation's on a panel with you. Yep. Ismo singing karaoke at the bar. Yes. I mean, it was a beautiful thing. And Maria Bamford happened to catch a show that Melanie Hearn was in. Mm -hmm. And then uh, she was going to, she was booked at Mark Ridley's the following Monday. Mm -hmm. And she invited Melanie to come into a guest spot. And out of that, Maria went to the uh, establishment there and said, you guys really need more female headliners here, especially of color. This woman is ready. And now Melanie's booked to do a weekend in December. Yep. So that's a really beautiful thing. Yes. Um, you also touched on the the branded shows that we have. This is another, we have four branded shows. The original Absolutely love was a show that Mike had created with some buddies of his years ago. It's called Jokes on You, Five Black Headliners for the Price of One, mm -hmm. hosted by Tam White. And they, you know, that's uh, Ricarlo Winston, uh, Rob uh, Jenkins. Thank you very much. Yep. Robert Jenkins. Uh, Kevin Johnson and Cam Rowe, along mm -hmm. with Mike, hosted by Tam White. Doesn't get any better than that. Oh, Great yeah. Show. Amazing line. Man, again, everybody on that show can headline. Yeah. Oh, everybody totally. can headline. They're all headliners. Yes. And then we have our ladies' show called Eyes Up Here, mm -hmm. which I am a part of, along with T Barb, Melanie Hearn, Kara Karachi, and uh, Camilla Bellario. Mm -hmm. We just did the Park Theater in Holland, and that is such a fun show. Greg Sharp, who is a friend of this yes. show, yep. is our host, and we love him because he's, I always call him like the kid next door, even though he's a grown-ass man, right. with <laughs> yeah. children, yeah. but, you know, he's got that, mm -hmm. I like I like him as a host because his material doesn't really cross over with ours. You know, he's right. talking about mm -hmm. the deli counter and the yeah. exactly. and that. Exactly. Big hit of a joke, by the You know, the bar at Menards and uh -huh. what have yeah. you. Yeah. But, uh, so he's just a perfect host for that show. And then we have another one called Gray Matters. Now this show this, is going to premiere, mm -hmm. and it, it hasn't it hasn't gone live yet. But oh, this is fine. five headliners all over the age of sixty. And on that bill, we've got Norm Stoltz, mm. Bob Phillips, Mike Bonner, Coco, and um, and Connie Ettinger. Mm -hmm. How do you yeah, do that, exactly. right? Oh yeah. And and then the fourth is our Dad Jokes show, mm -hmm. which is going to premiere next week at the Park Theater in Holland. Or this will it'll be after this mm -hmm. airs yeah, probably yeah, yeah. or before. Mm -hmm. But that show has uh, Josh Adams. Mike Larry, uh, Andy Beningo, Andrew Yang, to get that younger dad perspective. Mm -hmm. And why is the, the other one escaping me at the moment? I'm so sorry. Oh, Nick Leidorf. Yes. And then we have another show, actually, where Diego Atanasio is on that show because Andy had another booking. But that's yeah. fun. And, you know, that's kind of a Father's Day sort of thing. But yeah. we'll see yeah. how that rolls out. Yeah. And what I love most about all of these things, so, so you can look at it and go, okay, uh, five African-American men, okay, uh, five older people, five women, whatever. But 
people use those terms so often mm -hmm. to define comedy. Right. And this is, there's such, it's a great platform to really kind of put it back in their face. Because when people say something like, oh, I don't, I don't like women comedians or I don't think women are funny. Right. Okay, but here are five different women with that all happen to be women, but have entirely different delivery style, perspective on things. Background. You know, background. And it's like, n no, they're five comics. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, I, I really and, love those And you know, there's shows. a 30-year age span between the youngest and the oldest. And mm -hmm. I'm one of those, but I will, I'll let you guess which end. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly not the youngest. Um, but I love that too, you know. Mm -hmm. And we all went on this trip to Holland. We rented a house together. Oh, it was a really fun great. bonding experience. That sounds like a movie. It that sounds like a 90s road trip movie right there. I mean, we went out and worked the streets of Holland the day of mm -hmm. that show. Just like, you know, the promoters gave us a handful of, you know, tickets to give away. Oh, yeah, you, you and go and you hobnob around. And that, like, from what I've learned, because I, like, for the venues where I hold shows, I go up there in the weeks leading up to a show, and it works. You sit down, have a drink. Right. You talk to somebody, make a connection. Odds are they're going to be up there. Right. Right. You know, it's and old I, school footwork. It's grassroots marketing. Yes, you know? yes. And I said, geez, we need to put flyers in every one of these stores. And mm -hmm. I mean, watching Melanie Hearn work the streets of Holland, <laughs> I'm telling you, it doesn't get any better than that. You know, she's fearless and uh, she doesn't look like your typical Holland resident. Uh -huh. So uh, it was it was just so special and so fun. So and the show fun. went well. And, and that's a great theater. I mean, it's mostly a music venue, so we're trying to introduce comedy there. That's great. But I think it's going to get there. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That is very good. And yeah. to kind of go back what you were saying, like they're not like five women, they're five comedians. They're right. five comedians who can all headline. Right. Again, they're all capable of headlining right. a show, and you know that's when you know you've got a good core group of people on right. that show. And yeah, well, go watch you know, it. There's a lot of a lot of women in comedy that feel slighted. Mm -hmm. You know, we see these these chains on Facebook and social media, and you know I'm not getting my due, or I'm not getting attention, or I'm not being treated respectfully at an open mic. Which I don't have, you know, everybody sees me like as their mother, so mm -hmm. yeah. I don't get that treatment. But I see how it happens. And my perspective is, hey, girls, listen, w there are less of us, mm -hmm. more opportunities. So instead of complaining about the fact that you're not getting the opportunities, treat it as a numbers game, mm -hmm. right? I mean, people, there, you see so many shows that are all guys, mm -hmm. right? It's the five white guy show. That's yep. one we don't have yet. Mm -hmm. But, um, uh, the mayonnaise know, show. I mean, I think people people want to see women. And let's face it, who's in comedy clubs? Mm -hmm. Groups. Of, I one time I saw a bachelor party at a comedy show. Like, well, that's weird. Mm -hmm. But you rarely have a big show. There isn't a bachelorette party. There are a group of mm -hmm. women or people from their work. And so I think that they, you know, people and men too want to see lady comics. Mm -hmm. And so you know, the onus is on us to get better, to become headliners. You know, one, the other, one of the other things in this business that sometimes gets to me is when a comic accelerates too fast, mm -hmm. right? You see somebody new on the scene, they're mm -hmm. talented, now they're everybody's darling. Next thing you know, they're headlining. I'm like, ah, are they ready yet? You mm -hmm. know, because you really, in my mind, to be a headliner, you need to have an hour and a half of material. Mm -hmm. You need experience, too. Right. Because if, if the show begins to go haywire, or get off track, you need to have the experience to get people back, back in. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, And the ability to do a little more uh, crowd work, mm -hmm. to be a little bit more agile mm -hmm. in the moment. To be more seasoned, essentially. Right. Exactly. You know. So I, you know, I firmly believe that you, you kind of pay your dues and you work your way up. Right mm -hmm. now you're a stage comic, then you work, you become a, a host sometimes, which is to me the hardest job in the business. Mm -hmm. You know, then you work your way up to feature. And then I think that process takes years, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. Our good friend T. Barb, I was in the business for six years before I headlined. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, uh, I think sometimes promoters make the mistake of pushing people too fast. And I do think that there is also, you know, talking about experience, is types of experience. So we are very lucky in the Metro Detroit area that we have a wide variety of places to do comedy. Oh, yeah. Right. There are golf courses that are doing comedy, restaurants. We have three great comedy clubs. Mm -hmm. um, but there is also um, a lot of uh, urban rooms that are, are right. doing comedy. And if you look at, at someone who is doing, this is not a slight on any of the places that I mentioned, but if you look at somebody who is doing New Way, 
for three years and never steps outside of New Way mm -hmm. versus somebody who does Mark Ridley's for three years and never steps outside of that versus somebody who does Baker's in Detroit. Same amount of time. Those are going to be three extremely different levels of, of yes. media. Yeah. And you yeah. are really limiting yourself if you only stay in one room. You right. are, you're basically... Right cutting your feet off right, right. you know you but it's it's a filter that i i th in in my opinion that when i see people that are you know, complaining or belly aching or or you know saying why not me that they're not factoring that in right it's like okay yes you do have uh you know three years of experience behind a microphone but yeah you've never played a professional club Right. Or you've never actually dealt with a heckler. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever the case may be. So it is, it, it, it's not the same as, um, uh, as, as just getting the reps in. Right, right. It, it's yeah. quality well, you, as well as quantity. Mm -hmm. You know, you see people come up through the Ridley system, as mm -hmm. they call it, right? Yep. And I did. That's where I started. I took that class with Bill, and then uh -huh. I took Joel's class four times, mostly because it got me out to open mics, which... It's hard for me. I have a busy life outside of comedy. Yep. And um, and it does. It does help you get on the stage there. you know. And there are a lot of comics that feel like because they didn't come through that path, they're not going to get on that stage there. Mm -hmm. Well, how else are they going to see you? Yep. I mean, a lot of people go do the open mics. That's a mm -hmm. great way. And I tell you, Mark watches all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, He may not be there at the club every day, but he watches every show from what I've been told. Yep. And he's, you know, I've gotten feedback from him yeah. after a show, which is like, wow, getting that email from mm -hmm. Mark Ridley, that's pretty damn exciting. Mm -hmm. um, or a good job from Bill Bouchard. Right. right. And mm -hmm. and similarly, you know, um, the other the other clubs that we talk about haven't established that kind of a training uh, program. But I think if they did, it would be great. Mm -hmm. I know there are some some people doing some classes down at Planet Ant. Yep. I know Haley's got a class she's running. And I think that's great. You know, I'm I Mike and I have this conversation all the time. I'll, I'm all about too many open mics, too many shows. The pie's only so big. I get, you know, mm -hmm. and and he shuts me down on that. He's yep. like, no, that's giving people the opportunity yep. right, to get out there. And I think even when you're a paid comic and you're kind of maybe be, in your mind beyond that open mic, I mean, what a great place to work out new material. Exactly. Where else yeah. are you going to do that, yeah. right? And and listen, the hardest audience is a room full of comics, and oftentimes that's the whole audience, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And boy, if you can get a comic to laugh, that's like a badge, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll let you know when it happens to me. <laughs> um, but, but anyway, yeah, I think that, you know, there are so many opportunities here. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know... I, there are a lot of lot of men, I think, that get really frustrated. A lot of guys in their twenties and thirties, because there's a lot of them, right? Mm -hmm. It's a much deeper pool. If yes. you're if you're a thirty two year old comic and you're white, man, getting on it. When we look at submissions for a festival, I mean, that is the biggest group, mm -hmm. you know. And so, you know, my point to these guys are: you got to find a differentiator. You yep. got to find something about you stand out that's really different. That's not just another guy doing jokes about smoking pot and jacking off, mm -hmm. right? You know, yep. which is kind of the standard fare. Yep. Um, so I think when they do have a different point of view, it's you know. That's, that makes a big difference. So if I were a guy in my 30s, I'd be griping a whole lot more about not having enough opportunities than if I right. were a woman of any age. Right. And I am right. a woman of a particular age. <laughs> yeah. A lot of which we're seeing, too. There are so many great female comics right now over 50 mm -hmm. that, are, that are out and just starting. You know, mm -hmm. you're seeing them take the classes, and, and it's encouraging. You know, it is the one thing, you know, I, I'm, you know... It, it, Older, I didn't. I didn't start comedy until well into my fifties, mm -hmm. right? I started really late. Even though I had, a, I had gone to theater school. I've been entertaining and mm -hmm. doing public speaking my whole life, and I got to a point where I wanted to get back into the entertainment business in some way, shape, or form. After my my second husband died, and uh, I thought about community theater, which would have kind of been the natural. But I'm like, oh, I'm too fucking old for that. <laughs> If I'm a, I'm a diva, if I'm going to be an anti-mame, I'm not going to be the third villager from the left. I'm going to be anti-mame. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it takes time in a yes. theater troupe to work your way up. And so on a whim, I took that class, you know, mm -hmm. and I thought, oh, okay, I'm not bad at this. And yeah. then just kept with it. But the beauty of stand-up, especially for people that, and I know a lot of comics that have very, very big boy and big girl jobs mm -hmm. during the day, right? Yes. And the beauty of stand-up is 
it, you're doing the work by yourself typically. Yep. Sometimes we have mm -hmm. a writing partner or people that we bounce things off of, but for the most part, your rehearsals are on your own time. You you work as much or as little as you want, whatever works for your schedules. And now I'm loving it. And you know, and everybody, the the thing that stands out to me the most uh, because I have been such a, a comedy nerd for so long and like watching different different communities and you know hearing stuff from LA comics and New York comics and all of that uh, but it, it wasn't until I started doing it and experiencing it with friends of mine and having these conversations is that the overarching truth is that there's not one right way no everybody's path can and will look different right so if you want to become a national touring comedian that is you know, networking with the heliums and the improvs of the world, you can do that. If you want to run a show, you can do that. Yes. Right. If you want to do festivals and network and consider it as a hobby, you can also mm -hmm. do that. Right. You know, right. there's no... No license required. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Other exactly. than driver's license. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. And even then, some comedians don't have driver's well, licenses. Yeah. For various reasons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But there is Uber, thank God. Yes. Um, um, yeah, but, but you're but so yeah, right. You do it on your own time, and you you write your own story. And and, and the you know I mean people get discovered every mm -hmm. day. It, yep. There's you know and we've seen it happen, right? There are a lot of really well known comics that started here in Detroit. Less, she didn't start here, but Leslie Jones talking about you know a certain age. She was uh, over forty. Yeah. When, you know, and then and now she's funny, Leslie funny. Jones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, I I love that about it, and. Um, you know, at, at a point in my life where I thought, geez, that dream is gone. I'm never mm -hmm. going to. And, you know, at, the dream is there now, right? Mm -hmm. What happens with it is up to me. And at the end of the day, you got to want it and you got to work hard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so yeah. many times the comics that are complaining, I always think, why don't you spend less time complaining, more time working on some yes. jokes? Yep. Write some better mm -hmm. stuff. Yep. You know, I remember a time, uh, this was, I, I won't mention names, but at a, uh, at a comedy rumble, mm -hmm. right? A female comic said to one of the judges after, how come there's no women in the finals? You know, and his response was, write funnier punchlines. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> you yeah. know, and yeah. that hurt, you know, but that's the truth. Mm -hmm. Be yes. funnier. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, you know, knowing when you're funny, I guess there's only one way to find out, right? Yep. If they're not laughing, it's not them, mm -hmm. typically, exactly. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you can't just keep blaming the crowd and blame, like, right. look in the mirror. Right. You know, because if you are funny enough, 90% of your shows are going to be good. Right. I mean, bad audiences do exist, mm -hmm. but the better comedian you are, the more worked out your jokes are, the right. more polished you are, the less it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. right. One thing that drives me crazy is when a comic is not doing really well and then they scold the audience. Yes. I don't care what you people think. That was fucking funny. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Yeah. Right. right. Now you got egg on your face because uh -huh. they're not laughing at that either. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, so it's, yes. audience does, audiences do not lie. Or or if it's a it, it's a sparsely attended oh, yeah. uh, show, in there. you know, then, mm. then they start critiquing like, oh, well, nobody's here. Okay, but these 10 people are here. Yeah. Yep. So give them a show. That's yep. our mantra at Sam Rose. Whether it's one or a hundred, you're getting the same show, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And we've all been there, you know, where the room is like, now there's like seven people and two of them just walked out. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, but oh, God damn it, I'm going to play yep. that one person. <laughs> and then you, yep, and you keep thinking, oh shit, like, did I say something? Like, right. did, yep. did I drive well, away? Well, a lot of comics will call them out. Where are you going? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I had a guy who was doing a show the other night, and uh, he was the one guy that was responding to my cannabis material. Okay. And it wasn't a big crowd. And he kept leaving the room because his food was, like, outside. And I'm like, Rusty, dude, you can't leave me now. I, <laughs> I, you're the one person that's relating to what I'm talking about right mm -hmm. this minute. you got to stay right there. Oh, but you, you know how there's nothing better than when you're looking at that and that person's like, especially uh -huh. women are like, oh, yeah, yeah I've been there. Uh -huh. you know? And a lot of my content is about just, you know, being a woman at this age, trying to date and be out there and how hard that is. You know, mm -hmm. you know, we're both there, but on and off. Yes. Right? <laughs> but, yes. Um, you know, and, and women, I mean, after we every show, there's always somebody that comes up to me and says, oh, I know just mm -hmm. what you're talking about. Yep. Those guys in the camo or mm -hmm. that spank or whatever mm -hmm. that is, yep. right? So yeah. you're telling me to go upstairs and get rid of all my camo. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we would you be able I, to find it? Ah! ah so, you but I'll bump. <laughs> so you mentioned uh, so many people with, 
with big boy and big girl jobs yeah. um, and, uh, and and just how busy you are outside of comedy. Yeah, my other passion. Your, your big girl yeah. jobs. Yeah, so, well, I, by day I work for Habitat for Humanity, mm -hmm. which I absolutely love. I am the chief development officer in Oakland County. And uh, this is, I just started with this about four and a half years ago. And okay. throughout my career, I've done a lot of things. I, was in, I owned an art gallery for many years. Mm -hmm. I was in the publishing business as one of the founders of Our Detroit for a long, long time. And I uh, also have worked in the publishing business in the last couple of years. I've worked with Black Media yep. as a consultant, uh, running, uh, create, being a creative director, you know, which mm -hmm. is a little bit out of my, my uh, wheelhouse. Uh, but this job at Habitat is just, you know, when you when you go to work and you know you're helping people, there is no reward greater than that. Mm -hmm. And I had always had a history of philanthropy. I've been on many boards and chaired a lot of fundraisers over the years. And after I left my second round at Our Media, I thought, you know, I took took a little hiatus, mm -hmm. took six months off, and said, okay, I've got to got to figure this out. I want to. What am I going to do with this chapter now? With chapter four or five. Um, of my career, and this opportunity came up, and I thought I can do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been I've been selling people stuff for my whole life, right? right? right. So raising money isn't that different than sales, mm -hmm. and it's been great. It's a you know super laid back organization, the nonprofit sector, and it, you know people think you can't make money in the nonprofit sector. That's just not true, mm -hmm. right? You just got to find the right nonprofit and the right job for you. But there is money. I mean, and you do sacrifice a little for mm -hmm. the yeah. public sector. Yeah. But the freedom that comes with it, the flexibility, and I'll tell you, when you go to those home dedications and they're handing that key over to that mm -hmm. homeowner, okay. there's not a dry eye in the place. Okay. And we talked about, I'm going to mm -hmm. get some days and have some comics come out and do a build. Yes. You know, make a little donation and come out, mm -hmm. and I think that'll be a hoot. I was just going to ask, have you ever done that? Uh, not the one that you're talking about not now. Not for Habitat. Yeah, okay. not, not for, I mean, when I worked at UPS, we would go and do things like right. that all the time, which, right. and... Like, you know, it was almost basically like if you were supervisor, it was required. Right. Like once a month we had to go to like a soup kitchen or go yep. do like a neighborhood cleanup. And you know what? Like it really is good, you know, yeah, because again, right. you're helping people. And to see people who are genuinely like, look, I can't do this, but I appreciate you doing it. Right. You, you get the feels. Right. And it, you know? it really is like that tangible connection. That's what I've done um, through through some of my jobs. I've done a couple builds. Um, or been a part of a couple right. builds, and it. I'm not a carpenter. I'm not. And you don't need uh, to be. <laughs> you know, but but spending those hours, literally hammering nails or moving, you know, two by fours over here or painting, because I don't do that in my in my mm -hmm. every day. But it is so satisfying. Uh, Everybody wants money. I'm not saying don't donate, because please still donate. Um, but <laughs> when I have donated, the difference between the financial donation and the sweat equity donation is it's it's really fulfilling. I feel like you've got yeah. more skin in the game. Because you can right. walk away and go, okay, when I started this morning, it looked like this. Right. And now it looks like this. And right. I did that. And it's, yeah, yeah it's really Well, I mean, great. really, there's no reason why we can't help out people or help out our community. Right. Yeah, you know, well, like that is, and like, and you feel better. Oh, totally. Like literally, like you feel better knowing that you help somebody right. out with whether it's something big or small. I think I said you're not a carpenter. I'm not a carpenter. Right. You can see that giant hole in the wall back there. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was wondering about that. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. And, and you know the nice thing that for people that know about Habitat, they know that it's not a handout program. It's a mm -hmm. handout. So people that qualify for our home ownership program, they're paying a mortgage that's aligned, aligned with their income, but they also have sweat equity hours. They put 300 of hours of sweat equity either into their own home or working at our office or our restore. Mm -hmm. And when you're swinging a hammer next to the person that's going to live in that house, yeah. I mean, there there aren't a lot of uh, charities or nonprofits where you're interacting with the end user. Yeah, at the soup kitchen that might happen yeah. or a lot of places. Mm -hmm. But that I think that's part of the beauty. And companies like UPS, there are more and more companies with corporate responsibility budgets. Mm -hmm. And what we typically get is somebody that's got a corporate responsibility budget, but there's also a team building budget, and they put all that together, and and they come out, and it changes people. It that's really does, great. you know. So, yeah, I'm, I, having that makes it a lot easier to do comedy, yep. right? Right, because uh, as we know, there are not a lot of us that are making a full-time living. Yes, yes. <laughs> really? You yeah, don't say. Yeah, well, you know, we could count them on two hands probably. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. But, but that's, that's, that's also the beauty of it. With the time, mm -hmm. you, you know, you can have a, 
a full-time job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that, that helps bring perspective to your humor as well. Yes. A lot of people are, you know, doing material relative to what they do during the day. Right, yeah, because yeah. once you do reach a certain point, you know, it's it's been brought up a lot with, you know, say the, the Kevin Hart's of the world and stuff, where it, I know uh, with Ellen it was a, a big topic. Like, once you reach a certain point, how are you then relatable? Because, you know, like you said, when you get off stage and you've got that woman that's like, oh, yeah, I get that. Oh, yeah, I right. get that. Ultimately, that's what comedy is, right. is connecting and making something that someone can relate to funny. Right. And so when you are making millions of dollars and you don't do your own grocery shopping and you... You don't you know, know what a gallon of milk costs. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, then for you to be like, oh, isn't it what's the deal with butlers you know right. it's like it doesn't it doesn't connect in that same <coughs> way so yeah <coughs> but i was excited to see in the paper that um <coughs> taylor swift made a very sizable donation to gleaners here in detroit she did really? for concerts yes i just saw it and somewhere wow. on my feed this morning so i thought all right that's you know that's some giving back. I don't yeah. know what the amount was, but God bless her. Hey, it's know? something. Mm -hmm. And giving it to the local economy. That's, yes. you know, mm -hmm. that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It really, really yeah. is. I'm, I'm all about local. Like, I love going to like local restaurants or like, you know, right. like buying local brands. Right. Jenny's Spun and Ice Cream. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get a commercial. Spot. I'm trying to get a sponsor. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. We're all trying right. to get a sponsor right. from, uh, from Jenny's. And, well, uh, and we're and still you, waiting to hear you back. You know, this is our approach with the festivals, too. I mean, that mm -hmm. Traverse Festival of the 80 or so comics that were involved. 60 plus were Michigan based, mm -hmm. right? So I think that's part of, and I know a lot of festivals are drawing people from all over the country, but we have so much talent. Oh, here. we do, yeah. You know, now, well, I, 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 our plan is for it to continue to be that way, and I don't anticipate having any problem getting people to submit or finding people oh, yeah. to be on the festival. You know what I've always said too, like, I really think Michigan has the ability to become the spot for comedy. Because for a while it was New York and then L.A., a lot of people are going to Texas. Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of people here who are, like, really, really good. And it's always crazy when somebody will finally come to one of your shows and they say, oh, wow, like, that was actually funny. Like, they, like, well, like, like they what would you expect? It's yeah, like, yeah. It's like, what did you expect? So Right. Yeah. yeah. No, I have... Uh, at the show in Holland last week, a woman that I had known as a business consultant, like I haven't seen her probably in seven or eight years, mm -hmm. comes walking into the theater. Oh, I was in Muskegon on business. I've been trying to get to one of your shows. You know, so that was like, oh my, what an honor. I mean, yeah. we all have, you have, probably have a lot of friends. Yep. You've been doing this for a long time, and you probably have friends and family that have never seen you perform. Yep. It's like, what are you waiting for, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yep. But but in time, they all, they all get there. Oh, yeah. So, um, so what is... Oh, I, I was going to steal your line, and now I, I just went blank on it. You, oh, oh. I'm excited now. What, what, so what line was it? Okay. Um, it wouldn't be an episode without me having brain freeze. But you <laughs> do, you uh, will, when we talk about Michi Michigan comedians yes. with whomever the guest is, um, and you'll talk about, you know, favorite um, local comedians, comedians or and like who you want to work with and where you want to work yeah but I can't think of the way that you would always phrase it and that's what I was going to say oh steal. okay well yeah see now I'm having brain freeze uh, yeah but I, I yeah. Made it so thing, let's but... all get collective brain freeze uh -huh. okay, okay yes, so yes. yeah okay so anyway and we actually talked about brain freeze on the Cody Collabor episode out now by the way like <laughs> you subscribe <laughs> um, but yes yeah, so like, are there like as far as We'll start with famous comedians, and then we'll go local. Right. Who is a famous comedian that you're dying to work with, and then a local comedian who you're dying to work with? Wow, that's well, my favorite national headliner, headliner right now is Sebastian Maniscalco. Mm. I, I've loved him forever. I love. I try to mimic some of the physicality that he brings to the stage. I'm not anywhere near that level, <laughs> but I'm one of those comics that, that really tries to inhabit the. Mm -hmm. When I go to a show and the stage is like four by six, I'm like, well, it's going to be a problem, mm -hmm. right? Because I really like to move around. Whole heart of winery. Yeah, um, outside show. Yeah, and I love that, right? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, exactly. Yeah, outside show. Yeah. Uh, we the love Grab you, Sarah. Too great show. Tiny stage. Right? Roasted crow. Tiny stage. Yep, yep, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But. Um, 
So, yeah, to get to work with him would be a thrill. I mean, listen, I got the opportunity to be to host for the Tom Papa Show at the Travers Festival, mm -hmm. and that was that was a big honor. And then um, also I got the opportunity to perform at the Soundboard at Motor City Casino, which was another major highlight for me. And that was with Vic DiBedetto and Eric D'Alessandro, mm -hmm. a couple of East Coast Italian guys. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, I was the right fit for that show. <laughs> I, wore, I pulled out the red dress and the whole thing. How you know? was that stage? Because I... I remember it being very tall yes um but how how was that performing in, in that it was pretty space? cool yeah. you know um i have to admit that i like the intimacy of being able to get right face to face with somebody in the audience mm -hmm. and those kind of same thing at the park in holland the stage is removed from the audience and at the soundboard you can kind of see the first couple of rows so there is some interaction that you can do um but beyond that I mean, just stepping out there and, you know, and we, there were over 2,000 people there that night. Daryl was there with me, and it was, it's thrilling. Now, I have a theater background, yep. so I've been on big stages playing a different part, not myself, right? right? right. But that was, that was, that was a charge. Mm -hmm. I loved that, you know. Um, but that's a lot of pressure, too. Yes. A big audience like yes. that. Uh, so, so, yeah, those are some of the, the nationals um, that, you uh, that uh, that I love, that I lo you know uh, would love to aspire to work with, locally, you know there are a lot of some of these older comic. I love working with Bob and Sal. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. I think they're so much fun. I was supposed to feature for Norm Stultz for a show in May, and then sadly my dad passed away, and I mm. had to cancel out of the show. But I was really geeked about that to get mm -hmm. to work with him. Um, I'm actually of the age that I can be in the Grey Matter show, mm -hmm. so there will be some performances where I'll, I'll get to work with that group. Um, you know, I love working with Mike Jeter. That's, a, mm -hmm. that's a easy breezy. Um, and uh, I love the Eyes Up Here girls. They're so much fun to work with. I learned from them. I'm probably the n newest comic or the, mm -hmm. have the least yep. amount of time in of that group. And there's a lot of mentoring. That, you know, I love it when somebody that's 20 years younger than you is mentoring you. Yes. You know, you, mm. you, there's no age for a mentor protege. Yes. Right? Yeah. That can go all. And I've had a lot of mentors in my life that were younger than me. Um, is there anybody that you haven't yet had a chance to work with that you're, like, hoping that the paths will cross? You mean locally? Like, mm -hmm. uh, Nick Kelly would mm -hmm. be one. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I think other than maybe a comedy rumble, I don't think I've worked with Nick. Um uh, well, Mike Bonner, I've worked with him. Um, Coco, I'm super excited mm. to get to know because mm -hmm. I've never worked with her. Very, uh, very nice woman. Yes, yeah, that's what I hear, that she's fabulous. I had such a moment. I don't know if I've talked about this on this show, so guys, please let me know. But um, my my background is in radio, and, and those in the, the metro Detroit area, Coco was just a, a an icon yes. in, yeah. in metro Detroit radio. And I had the chance, I went to Hiprov, um, and she was a judge uh, at Hiprov. And having that moment of kind of worlds colliding, right. like, okay, she was a, a radio icon to me, but I never met her. So yeah. she was just up on this pedestal, and now she's on stage at One Night Stands, which is a right, place that I walk freely, <laughs> yeah, right. you know, and it's like, oh my gosh. And I got the chance to talk to her after the, after the show, and I was just excited to say, you know, hey, I came up in radio, and I very much looked up to you, um, because the thing about Coco is in radio, the majority of women in radio are... Uh, the, the laugh button mm -hmm. or traffic and weather. Right, right. You know, but Coco was a person. Personality. Yes. Yeah. yeah. She yeah. had opinions. She got a voice. She got above the, uh, you know, above the title headline mm -hmm. kind of yeah. phrasing. And it was aspirational. And and she was sitting down and, and she invited me to come sit next to her. And I just said, hi, I want to introduce myself. And as soon as I started to talk, I didn't, I'm, it's happening now. <laughs> I started to cry and I couldn't handle it. And I actually had to turn my chair oh, and, mm. and say the rest of it. But it was just such a moment. And she's unbelievably sweet and, and so hero. funny and all this yeah. stuff. Um, but I, it was such a, a moment oh, for me to have that, yeah. like, 
that's like lovely. crossing. And yeah. I'm, when you get a chance to work with yeah, her, she's... I'm excited. Your story is a lot more heartwarming. Mine's a lot more like... Because <laughs> I met her years ago. We did a show at um, Joy Manor. Oh, okay. Yeah, and she was on the show, and I ended up sitting next to her, and like, I'm like, okay, it's Coco. Like, not realizing it was the Coco from the radio, and all these people just kept coming up to her. So finally, I'm like, I'm like, are you that Coco? And she's like, how many Cocos do you know? I'm like, two, actually, and right, you're yeah. one of them. But yeah, it was, you know, she was the one Coco. Yeah. But yeah, no, yeah. Um, she's a legend. It's very nice. Yeah. And we actually share a birthday. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. January 27th. I'm looking wow. forward to meeting her. You know, there's also a couple of uh, comics that are from here that are gone. Um, I've worked with Derek Richards a couple times. Mm -hmm. I think he's brilliant. And I'm going to work on a show with him and Dave Landau mm -hmm. in October. So I'm super excited about that. Nice. Uh, that's, a, that's a great opportunity. So, yeah, you know. Have you ever worked with or heard of Marianne DeMoss? I have not. Oh, well, I've heard of Mary, her, but I have not Mary worked Ann with Marianne is great. Yeah, uh -huh. I think one of the... One of the best compliments I've ever heard for a comedian, um, I was having a conversation with, with Bill Bouchard when I was still running theater shows. I was going to try and get him to headline, and when I told him who else I wanted to be on the show with him, I, me I mentioned Mary Ann DeMoss. Bill said, no, 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 no. She headlines the show. He's you got to like, love that about Bill. He's like, no, no, no. He's like, she needs to be the headliner of her own show. But she really is that good, though. Yeah. Mary Ann is great. i got to find her. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, I've got her number, so yeah. if you want to... Awesome. Yeah, yeah, I will exchange that yeah. later. Yeah. I also have Coco's number if you want Coco's number. I, I do yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got that one too. Right. Oh, no, I, I got Coco's number. I got her number. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got your I, number. I just hope she doesn't have mine. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, I really, I, I, I tend to lean towards some of these older, more established, more seasoned mm -hmm. comics. Mm -hmm. I learn from them. You yeah. know, I... Uh, I had the good fortune of hosting for Mark Riccadonna at uh, One Night Stands a few months ago. And now he's not from Detroit, but he's from the East Coast, writes for SNL. And, I mean, it was the one headliner I've worked with that gave me the most constructive feedback. He took notes, and I tried to do a different set every night. And every night he came back with notes, and a half a dozen of them I've now incorporated into my That's set. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And he convinced me to totally reorder my set because I was starting with some material that could have been a little alienating to people. And he's like, you know what, you got to get him to like you first. And then you can hit him with all the dead husband stuff, right? So um, that was a huge piece of advice. That's fantastic. And I've never, I've never gone back to the old order of the set since. Nice. But, you know, that's just, and this guy's a writer, so probably he is yeah. more inclined to. And he, he and the uh, feature, Bill Bar Baranke, actually came to my house, and we did, a, we did a little brunch kind of writing session, and Jeter was there, and uh, it, was, it was a blast. That's so the, great. You know, to get that kind You're giving of me on ideas, Anne. You're giving yeah. me some, give some smoking and uh, yeah. <laughs> joke right now. Yeah, yeah smoking no, and joking. And, yeah, smoking and joking. Well, you know, it's, I think that process of writing with people is interesting because I, I don't love it always and I find a one-on-one -on -one is generally more productive for me because mm -hmm. we've all been part of those writing groups and what I find is that people give you advice that would work for their set yep right like like I'm okay, I like it you guys know me I'm not gonna say that mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say that word that's right. you know I'm working on a bit now of all the words I can't say on stage right because mm -hmm. I just can't get them out of my mouth mm -hmm. not that I don't hear them or understand them and I'm not a prude but there, there are four or five words I'm, you're never going to hear me say on stage. Right. Just not my persona. Mm -hmm. You know, I try to be that, like, you know, classy. Yeah. <laughs> sophisticated. Yeah. Classy so, so and I sophisticated. I open my mouth and then that's all over. Having but, a, do, doing a podcast in a basement in Westland. Well, you know, Can't get listen, classier than that. I like, I like slumming. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, you, you know, too, it's the... Uh, you know, the way you present yourself, mm -hmm. right? I dress up for every show. Mm -hmm. You know, there are plenty of people out there wearing T-shirts and jeans and hoodies yep. and this and that. And yeah. that's cool. But that's part of what I try to make my differentiator, mm -hmm. you know. So I always feel like dress for the person you, you envision yourself as. Mm -hmm. And so I, li I like the style. I do love Maisel. I love oh, yeah. the styling. You know, people are always like, oh, are you Miss... When, you know when you tell yes, people you're yes. a comic, are you Mrs. Maisel? Because that's their only point of reference. And uh -huh. I'm like, well, I'm more like Mrs. Maisel's mother, but <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, but that whole... I love that classic 40s, 50s, yes. you know, big full skirt. And mm -hmm. It's hard to do some of the sight gags with that, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's okay. Yeah, I'm sure there are some there. I like to... One thing that I... I don't know if it was Joel Fragamendi that might have said this. might have been Bill. 
look like you're there as part of the show. When you walk in, people should go, oh, that must be the entertainer, uh -huh. mm -hmm. right? Yes. As opposed to, you know, you'll come in and go, I'm the comic. T oh, you are? I get that too. Yeah, you know? that reminds me of a time when I, uh, I I did a show with Keith Lennart in West Lorne, Ontario, mm -hmm. two hours east, middle of nowhere in Canada, and we ended, we we checked in with the venue, and then we went and ate at this like restaurant, and it it used to be a greenhouse, and uh -huh. they were converting it into a restaurant, a really weird place, but we were dressed nice, and we sat down. And it was funny because when the waitress came over, she's like, "Oh, are you guys here to see the comedians?" And we're like, "We are, are the, the comedians." comedians. Yeah, it just yeah. felt so like you know, feels special, doesn't it? It does. They yeah. don't know. They don't know how not special yeah, we are. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then I ordered. Oh, are you? The, are you yeah. funny? I just, last night some guy I'm on the sidewalk and I'm like, "You guys coming in for the show?" You know? Yeah. He's like, "Yeah, I saw I'm one of the cops." Oh, tell me a joke. I mean, oh. you know, isn't that just like the oldest? I'm like, no. Yes. You got ten bucks? Now we can uh -huh. talk, right? Yeah. I don't tell jokes for free. Uh huh. So and I don't I don't just have you know, I mean I yes. got a joke but not when I would do it on my set. Yeah, right. right. You should always have a couple of What's your what's one of your which go -to one, one of my go to's jokes. is uh, guy walks into a psychiatrist's office. Doctor, doctor, you gotta help me. I'm a wigwam, I'm a teepee, I'm a wigwam, I'm a teepee. Doctor says, sit down, you're too tense. <laughs> That's one I love. <laughs> or, <laughs> or, or, what, what did the three-legged dog say to the bartender when he walked in the saloon? Hmm. I'm looking Are for the man who shot my, shot my paw. Oh, all right. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I just fucking hate it when somebody jumps your cut. Your, <laughs> I'm kidding. I know, I know. Yeah, that's, a, yeah, that's an old yeah. little. I, that, that's I mean, not usually my go to, but, but that's a There good are one. some funny, you know, there are some funny good street. You got any good street jokes? Uh, there's one I actually just heard, and it's rare to hear a new street joke, but it was mm -hmm. it was new to me, so maybe you guys have heard it. Um, that Do you remember when, um, when Stallone and Schwarzenegger um, and. Bruce Willis were starting Planet Hollywood. Yes. Um, so they, it wasn't always going to be Planet Hollywood. They were um, they were talking about doing uh, something to uh, focus on composers. Um, and Bruce Willis, uh, you know, shouts out, you know, I'll be Beethoven. And, uh, and <laughs> <laughs> I can already. I mean, it, but finish the joke. Yeah. It's but, Stallone. But it's, it's like yeah. I'll be Mozart. And Arnold's like, I'm not gonna say it. No, I'm, just, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not. Gonna really? Say it. I'm, no, that's I, that's yeah, the joke. I know, but Arnold I. Says, I'm as not soon as you it. said that, I'll it, be Bach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, started, oh, it started. to click Okay, in. that's good. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, it's not a tumor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a tumor. It's not. Get to the chopper. <laughs> Who's your father, and what Did does he, he do? Yeah. <laughs> and how about you? Oh, okay. So it's kind of a long one, but I'll try and it uh -huh. up. It's my favorite street joke. So anyway. The cops find this horribly burned body, right? Uh -huh. And they think they have an idea of who, of who it is, but they're having trouble identifying the guy. So they call on his two best friends. They said, hey, we need you to tell us if this is Daryl. Sorry, Daryl, I'm going <laughs> to... No, like, this is Char yeah, Daryl. This yeah. is not White Daryl. They're like, yeah. is this Daryl? So the first guy walks up to him and says, well, it looks kind of like Daryl. So he turns the guy over, and he opens up his butt crack and goes, no, nope, it's not Daryl. Cops say, okay, that's kind of strange. The other guy goes in there. He's like, well, that sure does look like Daryl. So, turns him over, opens up his butt crack and goes, nope, that's not Daryl. So the cops go, wait a minute, wait a minute. How, like, what are you doing? Wait, like, why are you opening up and checking this? They say, well, every time us two and Daryl are going to town, they'd say, hey, here comes Daryl with them two assholes. Uh oh. So, <laughs> Oh, so they were checking to see if yeah, yeah, two after. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. It was worth the investment in time, don't you think? Yeah. 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 It was. It was, yeah, it was. Yeah. It was good. It yeah. Was good. I I will say the problem that I've always had with street jokes, and you know, growing up, my dad had a thousand. Well, of he's them, a dad. I know, mean, yeah. it's a dad joke. And yeah. and he's also, you know, he was born in the '40s, and most of them are inappropriate for me mm -hmm. as a second grader to say, but right. I still do <laughs> yeah. them all. Um, but I got to an age, and I don't know when it was, that my logic brain wouldn't shut off when I'm hearing these jokes. So, like, I I struggle, like, even in in my own stupid Planet Hollywood joke. I'm like, nobody would do a themed restaurant about composers. That's the dumbest <laughs> thing. Or like when you're talking, like, but if he's that badly burned, you're not going to be able to pull the ash yeah. cheese apart. It's going to... You're taking like, it I literally can, now. Yes, yes. Her chick is dental records, for Christ's sake. <laughs> right. That's how you what are we doing yeah. here? 
I mean, dogs can't talk. But, <laughs> so yeah, I think I there's mean, a suspension that has to go on of just of you know. Yeah. Yes. Imagination exactly. and humor, right? It's all about that, that left turn. People do really, I mean, I think a lot of us, our humor is based on our life experience mm-hmm. for oh, the yes. most part. Yes. But people really take that stuff literally. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I do all this stuff about the dead husbands, and then there's always somebody that comes up to me after the show and says, Did you really kill your husbands? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I'm yeah. Like, well, Don't tell I'm anyone. Like, well, they're both dead. That's all I'm going to tell you. Yeah. You know, but people, they, they really take it at face value that every, you know, I mean, if you just told a story, as it is, it's not that funny, mm-hmm. right? And yep. kind of sad. But <laughs> yeah, it, taking life's yeah. absurdities and then putting that well, spin on it, that makes it not quite true. Yeah. And that's for, what makes it funny. For better or worse, because they would, like, I used to, my closer used to be uh, a joke um, about uh, where, where one of the lines was um, that uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on having relations uh, with who are dead on the inside. So, <laughs> It, it was definitely, it was born out of an incident and Noah was there and necrophilia came up and all of this stuff, but I built it into this thing. And so I would end with, you know, like, well, I'm not going to be a necrophiliac because I'm too busy fucking dudes who are dead on the inside. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the amount of people that would come up to me after a show, it <clears throat> honestly got to be too much where the joke wasn't worth it. That would right. just come up and be like, you know, hey baby, I'm dead on yeah. the inside. Maybe that's why yeah. people don't hit on me at the bar because I'm not doing that kind of humor. <laughs> well, you know, too, I do I do all the Spanx humor, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. And when I started comedy, I weighed 20 pounds more than I do now. Mm-hmm. So every once in a while, I'll be doing that bit and somebody will go, you don't need a Spank! Mm-hmm. Right? But I'm like, well, in reality, I'm skinny fat, right? Mm-hmm. So you, you don't right. have to be fat to need a Spank. Right. Yeah, right. But, but, you know, they, they want to burst your bubble sometimes. Yeah. You know? and it's like, or jump on your line. I, yeah. have, I have a bit that people <laughs> jump on it regularly. Oh, and, really? and that's telling me I got to change it, yep. right? Because they're 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 funnier, smarter than me. Yep. So yeah. If they're if they're if they're jumping on your line, you're not nailing it, yep. right? So I've got one right now that's really kind of in my craw. Mm-hmm. And I mean, isn't for me that's what writing partners are about, you know? Yes. I want to do, uh, you know, we're working on some stuff at Sam Rose for some community stuff, and one of the things we were talking about is these writing sessions, you know, and maybe the focus is as simple as everybody's got that one bit or that one setup, and they just, they don't have the right line to end it with, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and I have things I've worked on that I don't do anymore because I just don't have it, you know, it starts funny and then it falls flat, Mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, I'm so impressed with people that can do great callbacks or tags, and, and, you know, the other thing I, I think is interesting in our business, you know, I, I've been doing this going on five years, and I still do some jokes that I did the very first time I got on stage. Mm-hmm. And I see a lot of comics that are trying to build a lot of material, like they got a Netflix special or something coming up. And you see this a lot with comics that run their own rooms, mm-hmm. right? And they're on their own shows a lot. So every month, because they've got a lot of repeat audience, they're having to come up with brand new material for that audience. Yep. And I, you know, my advice to young comics is do what works and keep doing it. Keep doing it, keep doing it. Don't perform for the other comics. I mean, it's intimidating when you walk into a, uh, a room with other comics and you know you're going to do stuff that some of them have heard a half a dozen times and you got to just put that behind you, yeah. right? And, I, you know, I say to comics, just take what's good, record yourself all the time, yep. listen back. I used to have a rule because I used to keep like this laugh monitor, you know, that I read in the comedy Bible because mm-hmm. I'm such a nerd about everything. And I would do like a laugh per minute calculation, mm-hmm. right? And uh, if I had a joke that three times in a row didn't land, no matter how funny I thought it was, it had to go mm-hmm. or be changed. or be. And so being self-critical, because we all have stuff that, you know, and this is when the comic says, I don't care what you people think, that joke was funny. Mm-hmm. Well, that joke's only funny to you, right? Yes. right? So, under, you know, and I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, I have like a running monologue in myself, in my head all day long, and you know, you, you're laughing and people are like, are you okay? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just right. cracking myself up mm-hmm. over here. You know, but I think that that methodic approach has worked for me. In terms of building, you know, you start by when when a, when a new comic says to me, "I got twenty minutes," I'm like, "No, no, no you don't. No, you you don't. might have well, three. You might have twenty minutes of babbling, but yes, you probably only have three you. minutes of good material. Thank so you. get That's, three, yeah. then get five, take it to seven, get a tight ten, mm-hmm. work your way to twelve, get your way to fifteen, yep. and and work yourself up. And I'm still at the, you know, where I, I I'm working toward headliners still, right? Mm-hmm. So I maybe have. 30 minutes solid, 40 minutes, 10 of which is maybe need some work. 
Um, and so I'm not trying to rush that process. I want to be ready when I get there, you mm -hmm. know, and really churning and working and reworking and reordering and changing this around, yep. I think is advice that I would give to new comics. Quit trying to have all, all this material that's half-assed. Well, yeah, and right? they, they think just because they have a joke, they need to put it in their set. Right. And it's like, right. they, not every joke is funny. Right. You know, it's like they say every single thing they have, it's like, well, yeah. Right. Maybe a quarter of that was funny. If you're a comic that's just, if you're a Brad Wenzel and you're doing one joke and you're just like Machine Gun Kelly with those jokes, which he's brilliant at, mm -hmm. I can't do that, right? Yeah. I have premises, right? And they all run about two to three minutes, mm -hmm. which makes it easy to plan a set because you're going to do this one, I'm going to need two minutes there, blah, 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 blah. Um, but, you know, I mean, everybody's style is different. I love a comic that can just get up and riff one joke after another and yeah. just keep them laughing, but... Uh, I'm just not that comic. I'm I'm really excited because uh, my my first uh, out of town club weekend um, is actually it's it it will have already happened, uh, but it's it's featuring for Brad, and I'm really excited because stylistically I am so different right. from him. Is that up you know, in Wisconsin I'm, or somewhere? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Oh my god, I'm so excited I'm for you. I'm very you know I'm very much more storyteller right. kind of base, and he is. Just a, a and, and that's perfect gun. for and a comic I'm like so that. You know, a headliner yeah. wants somebody that's not going to just get the audience ready for them, but not be like them. Yep. You know, so mm -hmm. whenever I uh, host or feature for somebody that I haven't worked with before, I make sure I watch as many of their videos as yep. I can, mm -hmm. so that I'm not coming up there like, oh shit, you mean you got Spanx jokes too, yep. or whatever. Yeah. That doesn't yep. usually happen with the guys, but yep. sometimes. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, yeah they are Spanx for men. Mm -hmm. um, I got my camel Spanx upstairs. <laughs> right. Well, I did a, I did your show at the Bearded Land, mm -hmm. and Barb Modrek Rusted was on Crow. the show. Oh, thank yeah. you. I'm sorry. I knew it was one of those animals yeah. with a weird yeah. name. Crow, I was an animal lamb. show. Do you, do you weird, do yeah. shows in anywhere that are not some kind of funky animal? I have a rule. It's got to be an animal. Okay, no, so yeah. rested or whatever. Yeah. Okay, but um, Barb got up. I'd never worked with her before, mm -hmm. and she did some material that was very close to something I do. She was talking about men online and things online that she doesn't like on Match or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I can't get it. So, like, in the moment, I'm like, okay, let's scratch that and plug this one in. Mm -hmm. But um, I think we've all been there. Where yeah. you, yeah. You're doing something, and then the headliner comes out, and you're like, oh, Jesus, I stepped on their premise. Same thing. The first time I ever worked with Reed, um, Ledbetter, mm -hmm. uh, I had never seen her, and uh, I was going up after her, and then she, you know, she has 15. You know, like, she's she's fairly new, and so it's like, this is the material that I have, and I haven't strayed away from it yet. And good for her, because right. she's, she's honing in on this. So you had to let her have it. But Exactly. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, okay, well, I'm not going to talk about my AOL stuff, and I'm not going to talk about that. Because her and I are similar age, right. um, you know, and we were talking about a similar time, you know, in the, in the late 90s, and I was like, I can't get up there and do online and dick pics and all right. of this, because... That's exactly what she's We, we doing. all have the same life experience, mm -hmm. right? I, I remember early on, I was doing some online dating stuff, mm -hmm. and I said to Bashar, I'm like, God, is this like hacky? Is everybody doing this? He said, it's not the premise. It's your take on it, yep. right? Same thing with uh, when I started doing my cannabis stuff. Mm -hmm. I thought, God, everybody, God, everybody in the world is doing that. But... I found a different perspective on it, right? I mean, and now the fact it kills. That you're calling it yeah. cannabis. Is I, well, yeah. <laughs> you're, yeah, we didn't call it cannabis in my day. That's the whole joke: is uh -huh. all these 28-year-olds walking around acting like they invited, invented pot, right? Uh -huh. Or excuse me, cannabis, uh -huh. right? Because yeah. in our day, it was Mary Jane or weed. You got any weed? You got uh -huh. any dope? My right grandma now. called it rabbit tobacco. <laughs> we should, that's is that a wow. southern thing? I, yeah, yeah, it must be a southern thing. <laughs> yeah, y'all smoking that rabbit, rabbit tobacco? tobacco? What the fuck is rabbit tobacco? And what's tobacco? people saying? It smells like a skunk. I don't get bad weed. Are, is it bad weed? Rubbing in here? Oh, bad okay, weed smells like skunk. Yeah. Oh, I don't smoke bad weed. Life's too well, short. The, yeah, to drink cheap wine or smoke shitty pot. Yeah, bad weed that's smells like. That's the tagline. Yeah. Life's too short to smoke Sh bad weed. Yeah. yeah. And Duke. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I Duke. feel a merch coming on. That could be my next rolling tray. The one I do have a rolling tray. That's part of my merch. And it's the functioning scale, because mm -hmm. you know that bit. And then mm -hmm. I'm actually working on some new Spanx 
merch Love it. Ooh, that I'll be nice. rolling out. Very yeah. cool. I'll yep. just say there's a koozie involved. <laughs> nice. Oh, well, but, um, before we go ahead and, uh, and we and we wrap it up here, is there uh, besides your merch, is there anything else that, that you want to <laughs> plug promote? or yeah? Well, please, so free. this shows uh, based on when this show will be out. I do want to talk about the Sam Rose residency at Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle in August. Mm -hmm. We have four consecutive Wednesdays where I think we're starting out with dad jokes, then eyes up here, then gray matters, and closing it out with jokes on you every Wednesday. Tickets are on sale now; they're already selling. Nice. So I'm super excited about that. Um, and really, Mike and I are thrilled that Mark uh, and Bill put their their trust in us to give us those dates. And uh, we're we're really hoping to kill it. Um, at Sam Rose, we've got show. Go to follow us on Sam Rose Entertainment on Facebook. And uh, Ann Duke, Mike Jeter, all, you know, Mike promotes that. That's mm -hmm. part of what, that's his end yeah. of the business. He promotes the heck out of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So we've got shows coming up at, uh, at Janopolis in Brighton. Where we've got a, a venue down in Taylor called Host that we've got. You're going to be on that show coming up. And uh, we also have a room out, oh, excuse me. Kudos. No. Thank you. Kudos. I, 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 I just made my own. I corrected I you and then I did the same thing. Host is a restaurant in Utica where we've got a room upstairs. They were actually just featured in the June issue of Our Detroit. Really cool space. Park Theater in Holland. Doing some stuff in Battle Creek. Nice. Of course, Traverse City, uh, J D January 31st through February 3rd. We're extending it a day this year. Killing That's it. That's absolutely happened. Do you guys have a submission window yet? Uh, submissions should be open in August. All right, stay so tuned in keep, August. keep an eye out. And if you follow us on Sam Rose and, and join our email list, then we'll make sure you have all that information. But Sounds good. Thank you so much. Oh, cool. Thank you for coming. I love Absolutely. you guys. Love you too. And thank you for feeding me. Oh, that's right. <laughs> it's rib Sunday, so I'm still getting the ribs out of my teeth. Uh, we got more upstairs as well, All so right. please feel so free to take delicious. some more. Awesome. Yep. Yep, yep. Uh, anything you uh, want to plug, Elena? You can find me on all the socials at Gonzaleza, G-O-N-Z-A-L-E-E-Z-A. -E -E um, and, uh, yeah, follow me there, because I think uh, I, I think the, the show I screwed up last episode has already happened. <laughs> uh, and, yeah. Cool, cool. Tell us all your animal yeah, places. I've got the Bearded Land in Plymouth <laughs> that I run, the Rusted Crow Distillery in Dearborn Heights, the new Rusted Crow in Belleville, and then Downey Brewing Company in Dearborn. Again, thank you so much. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you for watching, guys. Thank you.